Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the That Scuffed Up podcast with your host, Stephen Hayden, and my other host on the other side is... Oh, oh, I, there's no Justin Lee, apparently. Um, not sure where he went, but... Oh, I guess you guys are just stuck with me tonight. Uh, just as we mentioned in the podcast last weekend, uh, Justin is unavailable for these next two podcasts. He's in with a family trip uh, for this Thanksgiving break, so not only will he be missing uh, today's Wolf Ball, as you guys will be seeing this on a Tuesday, uh, he will also not be on the podcast for this week and for next week. So you, and so you guys are stuck with me unless I put on a guest, which no guest for this week. We're making this a, a short and easy podcast, something... Uh, that we don't see too often on, on the channel here, to be honest. You know, we see sometimes we get some of these two, three hour podcasts. We even have one that was divided up into two parts where one part was two hours and the other part was two and a half hours. So, none of that today. You guys are getting something nice and short. Just me talking to the people, talking to the listeners and viewers of, and participants of OC with Football. Uh, mainly going to be focused on OC with Football today, just talking about week four and then some other stuff going on with OC with Football and potentially some other things. So, uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, we've got the week four results here to start off. You know, we're, we're halfway through the season now for OC Wiffle Ball. Uh, we got four more weeks left, and then we get going with the playoffs. So we started off here uh, with the, with the first game for D for D one. We have the Avocados taking on the Trash Pandas right away in the first slot. Trash Pandas coming away with a big seven to six victory. Very close game here overall. I think this one needed a walk off to get the victory in the sixth inning. The Trash Panda is able to pull it out and and, and advance their record and their place in their standings. Uh, very, very good game for them overall. Uh, Avocados right in there as well. Great battle between two teams that are on their, that are on their eyes, so, which I'll talk more about the Avocados a little bit later in their second game. Uh, but with their with, with the Trash Pandas, you know, their, the, the emergence of Blake Fitzgerald has been really big for them. Especially, uh, we've seen it pitching wise from him, um, and now hitting wise, we're seeing it even more as well. He's got a 529 average so far for through the first four weeks, a 619 on base percentage, 10 home runs, one of the top home run hitters. I think he he's he would uh, he'd be second right now, just behind Tyler Moore. Uh, but but over uh, overall, Blake Sestrel doing the great things at, at the plate for them. Uh, Brian Brian Workman with a 348 average, a 483 on base percentage. Uh, do, doing uh, with a good number of hits, 12 hits on the team. Uh, you, you know, these these guys, we all know they can hit. And once they get Mo right back in that lineup, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with this team. Uh, they do have the one blemish on their, on their record so far, which has made a difference in the run differential, uh, being a 16-run loss. But uh, other than that, they've been, they've been extremely good in every single game. I'm able to come away with a big victory here, but... This is also a good sign if you're if you're the Avocados as well, you know. Uh, you, you you have a game like this where it's first a team that just made it to the play, uh, to the World Series last year, a team that knocked you out in the wild card round, and you, you say you know what you're you're all right with it. You you were right there in that game. You had a chance to win. Uh, unfortunately, did not come up with a win this time. Maybe in the future when uh, if these two teams play each other again, possibly in a playoff game. You know who knows what, who knows what could be different. So uh, I'll talk more about the Avocados a little later on though. Next up on the week rule four results, we have the OC Wolves of LA taking on Shepherd's Pie. Another 6-20 game here. Shepherd's Pie coming out with their first victory in D1 this year. A 6-5 walk-off home run victory for Shepherd's Pie. Now there's a lot of offense early going on this game. I think Shepherd's Pie had a couple runs in the first. I think OC Wolves of LA might add all their runs within the first two innings, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but you know, Shepherd's Pie able to able to come out with a with a big victory here. Uh, they adv- they move their div- their conference uh, standings to one and four now. Uh, they're c- getting their first one versus OC Wiffles we'll we'll of LA, which OC Wiffles also fall to one and four, uh, which will affect their play or their uh, their seating right now, as we'll get into later on in the podcast. But uh, for sh- for sh- for Shepherd's Pie, uh, we we've we've seen a mixture of different pitching uh, between Anthony. And uh, Evan White, who's pitching as well, and now you have Nick Tone pitching a little more as well. Uh, often, often starting games, which is a, which is interesting to see. And while and while uh, no Nick does not have the greatest numbers, you still have Anthony with some good numbers. And you also have Evan White, who's doing pretty well on the mound. Uh, it seems like it seems like he's uh, up the velo 
from the previous season, down to a 4.80 average. Uh, but we'll see Wolf of LA. You know, it's the second time this season we've seen a walk-off loss by one run. Uh, just just seems to be a little bit of an issue with their second pitcher, finding that consistency. Uh, it seemed it, Ethan Lee's usually tr- that guy trusted uh, with with those other with those other two innings after James Lee is done. Who James Lee is off to a phenomenal start, especially pitching wise, to this season. Uh, but Ethan Lee just un- unable to find the consistency so far this year. Uh, six six and two thirds innings pitched, ten strikeouts allowed, twenty two runs. Uh, you know, for, if you want to if you want to try to make the make a playoff run. Uh, for this, it's just it's just not going to work that well uh, with with those stats. So, no, James Lee's very much doing his thing. But once they find that consistency with that consistency with that second pitcher, I think they'll be in a lot better shape. Um, no, that's a team I I see I see that can do pretty well. But uh, Shepard's probably able to get something on the board on the board here in the win column in Division One. We'll see if they're able to com- uh, to carry that over into any of their uh, their future games coming up in these next four weeks. Next up, we got the LA Wolves of OC taking on the Avocados. Seven twenty-five game with the LA Wolves of OC taking this one ten to four. Relative, relatively close game. Uh, at one point, it was a little more, it was it was a little more separated. The Avocados did get three runs in the in the bottom of the fifth inning. Uh, but overall, LA Wolves of OC got off to a hot start. Uh, Stephen Hayden in his four plate, first four plate appearances had two home runs, a triple, and a single. And then after that, Jordan Joshua came on. And, uh, continue to do his thing, but the Av- Avocados. I think they they had two losses here, but I think they were two extremely good games for them, and we're seeing and we're seeing a lot of improvement from them, especially with the pitching side. You know, uh, Dan Lukak has been imp- has been working on new pitches, and he's added some new stuff to in this year, some drop stuff uh, that he's incorporated with it, uh, within his within his repertoire. And now you have Lucas Sardo, who seems to be rejuvenated back on the mound again. Uh, looking back, looking more to be like his uh, his spring or summer self, uh, back on the mound there. So uh, that, this team keeps playing the way it is. I, th- I think they're going to be right in a lot of games and have a chance to to make a real good playoff run. I mean, overall, Lucas Sardo has an ADRA with in 15 innings pitched and uh, and 19 innings pitched. Dan uh, Daniel Lukak has a 7.26 ERA. So I think there's I think they're starting to figure stuff out. You know, they they did hold the hold the L. Wilsonville seat to 10 runs, which uh, based off some of the other games, is something we haven't seen a whole lot uh, holding, the, holding that team to ten runs. But uh, but also hitting wise, you know the Avocados are off to a great start as well. Uh, Lucas Sardo so far batting a five hundred five hundred average with a six twenty two on base percentage. I know two two time hitting award winner uh, just continuing to do his thing, uh, or is it one time? I can't remember for sure, but it was it definitely won at least one hitting award um, in one of the previous seasons. Uh, but he's he's off to a great start, you know. Hitting five hitting five hundred is always a always a very good thing to see. Uh, re- overall, as a team, they have a three uh, three uh, three oh seven batting average with a four fifty eight on base percentage. You know that can, that can serve a team very well once it comes to the playoffs. But uh, you know, with that combination of that improved pitching and and the hit and the hitting being being there, and I think that hitting can be even better. I know I know I know they're a team that's known for hitting, so I think they can they'll improve on that and become even better. As the season progresses on, but uh, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see we're able to get a good win out here, uh, but I'll talk more about them uh, with their later game uh, that's coming up here, uh, which is actually right now. Ellie will see uh, play play against the D two team. Bad news, Ningers take that one nine to zero. Uh, you know, Ellie will see got a, got five runs early uh, thanks to a couple home runs, one being from Donna Caroni. Uh, Steven and Jordan were able to shut things down on the mound. Steven, little struggling recently on the mound. Uh, has not had, has not had the best start uh, for him. Uh, still, had, still only had a 3.69 ERA, 13 innings pitched, 29 strikeouts, eight runs allowed. Uh, but a little unlucky with some stuff. Gave up uh, a jam shot off end of the bat, a home run to James uh, James Lee that uh, that at, uh, added up to five of his eight uh, five of the eight runs he's given up, and then. The other three were obviously uh, were given up to the Avocados, but uh, b- big story, and I th- and I th- I'll talk about this a little later, uh, kind of with my uh, MVP favorites uh, or other awards favorites, uh, Jordan Dressler. Jordan Dressler is doing amazing things out there. Uh, has kind of has kind of took a back a little bit of a backseat role before uh, this previous season uh, with the addition of Dustin Staggs to the Little C. We saw playoff time. 
Uh, he pit, he did pitch eight innings in the playoffs, but uh, Stephen and jo- uh, Destin did pitch eleven during their World Series run. Uh, but Jordan's re- Jordan's really stepped up. He's he's worked on a lot of stuff, and uh, I know it, it, w- it wasn't until Week Four that he gave up his first run, which is a solo home run versus the Avocados, and uh, which our co-host Justin may or may not have been paying attention, but uh, maybe he might have been able to catch it if he was actually paying attention, but. Uh, in Jordan Dressler is with, had so far 16 innings pitched, 0.38 ERA, 37 strikeouts, only one run allowed. I mean, what more can be said? And then, and offensively as as well, he's he's killing it, leading the league in average uh, with a 571 average. I think he might be leading the league in on base percentage as well with a 651 on base percentage, a very high slugging. Uh, over and over two, uh, over two, uh, uh, two in the OPS. Uh, Twenty hits already on the season. Nine of those being home runs. Be tied for third in terms of home runs. So, uh, we'll, we'll see. So far, sitting six and zero, oh, doing extremely well. Uh, this this one was actually a little bit difficult of a game for them. You know, once that first inning passed, uh, we'll see. We weren't really able to score much. Until the fifth inning, where uh, Stephen did hit maybe the farthest home run uh, he, he's ever hit in OC with a ball, uh, which, uh, given the fact that I am Stephen Hayden, I can say I, I, I smacked one. <laughs> yeah, I just I just got on one. But for bad news, Dingers, this was not a bad game at all for them. Uh, Joe Reese looked really looked really good on the mound, uh, and if they had a couple more players, who knows what could have happened? And maybe this could have been a closer game, but. Uh, for bad news dingers, I'm not. I'm not. Dis- uh, I wouldn't be discouraged uh, by what they had at all. I think bad news dingers are still off to a uh, to a pretty good start here. Uh, I think they. I think they can be a little bit better. They improve some. They prove themselves to whoosh and wiffle D's, But uh, I'll talk more about bad news dingers in a little bit. Uh, first, we got to go finish off for the last D1 team of the night, uh, which would be the Beach City Bombers taking on the D2 team OC Juicers, and Beach City Bombers able to take this one in a. Uh, in a 18 to 2 victory, um, you, know, you know, I mean, what more can what more can be said about the Beach City uh, Beach City Bombers in this game? Able to get the offense going real good, uh, and they give up a couple runs. But I mean, those Juicers juices do have some ta- do have some talent on the team, uh, in in ter- and the likes of Chad French and, uh, and and other players like that. So. I, I think the OC juices are figuring stuff out. And I think they'll eventually be, uh, look to look to be and continue to be better as the as the season goes on. Uh, but t- uh, Tyler Moore is ha- having a great offensive start as well. I should mention that uh, 477 average with a 531 uh, base percentage, extremely high slugging. Part in part because he is literally the definition of a home of a singular home run guy, uh, which me is kind of that kind of similar guy myself. Uh, I, I can appre- I can appreciate uh, Tyler Moore. Twenty one hits, ten singles, eleven home runs. Uh, leads the league in home uh, in home runs so far. And if I'm not mistaken, he also yes he does also lead the league in hits. He's has just one more over Jordan, although he does have a couple more at, at uh, plate appearances than Jordan. Uh, he has six more plate appearances than Jordan does so far. But uh, so far, Tyler having, having a, looking to possibly have a silver slugger season so far, uh, which he. Weird enough, he's never won. He's never won. Uh, well, the only award he's won was that Manager of the Year award. I mean, besides the World Series, obviously. But uh, you know, we'll we'll see if he's able to to capitalize and be able to uh, to come out with one of these big awards uh, and if for uh, for, uh, for hitting or even for pitching something like that. But Beach City Bombers can look to continue on. Uh, I'll talk more about the standings for D one later on after after the, the breakdown of all these games, but. Uh, not too much movement in the D1 standings, I should say. A little, little bit uh, here and there, but that'll be discussed later on. Going into the D2 games, there weren't a whole lot of D2 games where it's just D2 versus D2. We got just two of them. Uh, two, t- two teams that played against D1 teams as well uh, played each other. It would be the OC Juicers and the Bad News Dingers. Bad News Dingers take a 10-3 victory over the OC Juicers. And uh, we, we, talked about, we, we talked about it with the Bad News Dingers before. Uh, they had, they've they've had some they've had some good moments and then sometimes they've had some close games where they're just not able to come out on top and once they're able to get those I think I think they can be a pretty a pretty good team and a challenge Wiffle D's and Woosh who are currently above them right now uh, but but uh, Alan Yakovlev, Yakovlev uh, with a 444 average 600 on base percentage 
uh, got a, got five home runs on him so far, uh, which is t- which is uh, so would be tied for second place in D two for home runs so far, uh, just behind Drew Plitt. Uh, very interesting. Who I know was not there this week for Woosh, but uh, Joe Re- Joe Reese is continuing to pitch well, and I, th- I think a big thing for Bad News Dingers is they're getting a little more consistency from that second pitcher. Uh, actually, Shane McCoy has has a lower ERA right now than Joe uh, Joey Reese. Uh, Brett Humphreys has worked a little bit on the mound as well, uh, too, and he's not, did not has not allowed a run. So, uh, I I it, it seems it seems that their bad news thingers are finding more consistent second pitcher, and I think that's gonna be that's gonna be big for them as they go into the playoffs, not just having to rely on Joe and kind of hoping kind of hoping so, uh, you get a big enough lead to be able to hold that off. It seems like Shane McCoy is now growing as a pitcher and holding more of his own. Uh, but as I mentioned, for OC, as for OC juicers, I think they're going to continue to improve. Uh, you've got like Joe Gonzalez hitting 381 with a 536 on base percentage so far. And even Johnny Tosco with a 625 on base percentage. Uh, overall, not a whole lot of home runs on the team. They have four home runs uh, in total. When they get those numbers up, I, th- I think they can... I think they can start making some noise and put it and put a scare into some of these teams, such as Woosh Wiffle D's or Bad News Dingers. But uh, that'll be that'll be seen if that is to happen. The other D two game that went on was Woosh taking on Wiffle D's. Wiffle D's coming out with a, with a big win here, An eight to seven victory over Woosh. I know Woosh was missing a few guys, and I don't know if anyone saw the Instagram page. Uh, some there was a story, and there was also in part of a video there was. Uh, Donald in the business, the business casual outfits, uh, with the, I think he had a, uh, it was a collared shirt, uh, pants and belt, uh, dress pants and belt, and then he had, there was barefoot pigeon on the mound. So, um, I, I know, I know that Woosh is, uh, was missing a couple guys, and including, I think, I think uh, they were missing uh, Drew Plant and uh, Nick Usoff in this game. Wolfeldee's coming out with a big, uh, big victory when it mattered. You know that could be that could be the di- uh, difference maker when you're talking about the one seed in the future, uh, which we'll get more into those standings a little bit. But Wolfeldee's off to a, off to a good start as well. Alex Harris not quite having the same pitching numbers he did the previous year, uh, but through 13 in the third innings pitched, he does have uh, 26 strikeouts with a 5.86 ERA. Uh, so I, I I think I think Wolfeldee's will be right in there uh, when you talk about when you talk about that World Series contention. Uh, it's just going to be whether they're able to defeat Woosh when they're at full at full strength. So, uh, and any, anything can happen. I've seen, I've seen weirder, a lot weirder things happen in the past. So, going next into our purple league games, we've got a four games going on during the night. Starting off with the the top two teams in the purple league playing against each other, Glizzy Gladiators taking on the Pancake Batters. Very high scoring game here, thirteen to nine victory here for the Glizzy Gladiators. Uh, the defending champions continue to. Continuing to get the job done, moving to four and zero so far in the season. I mean, you know, with with the, with the, we know we know they got some firepower, especially uh, from some previous successful D one teams such as Kyle Fromm and Joey Ponder, and also the, and also some uh, some talents uh, such as such as Shelby Balin as well, uh, Balian I should say. I, I don't know why I keep. I apologize, Shelby, if you're listening to this. I don't know why I keep calling you Balin. I keep I. I <laughs> Uh, me and Joey had this conversation where we were still trying to figure out whether the Y or the L is first. So we're uh, we're, we're we're working on that. But uh, very high very high scoring game, fun game, to, fun game to watch. Uh, you know, just me walking around uh, was able to get and see, see some of this and some great, some great fun between these two teams. And it's all, always good to see with the with these teams. Next up, we got uh, Swingers and Dingers, aka Wiffle Does. Taking on We Got Spice, which I, I actually had to figure out which team Swingers and Dingers was because I didn't, I didn't recognize that name at, at first, and I was I, I, I thought Wiffle, I thought Wiffle Does were still in here, but Wiffle Does was their name in the fall season. So, uh, but Swingers and Dingers do get their first victory of the Purple League with a nine to eight victory over We Got Spice. Like again, very, very very fun game. You know the guys on Swingers and Dingers also pl- also play with Wiffle, uh, a lot of them play with Wiffle Does as well. So. They they do have some experience. It's um, I've heard it's very difficult, you know, to try to stand to that fifty five mile an hour speed limit. Just just in general, it's it's, pr- it's pretty it's pretty difficult. And I and I know from experience where sometimes I'm playing some fast pitch stuff and and come back down even just come down to sixty two. It's it can be difficult at times. But uh, these these all these teams seem to be adjusting to that pretty well. Uh, and Swingers and Dingers able to get their first victory out of it. 
Speaking of swingers and, ding and dingers, still uh, playing another game versus another team. I uh, was playing their second game in the Glizzy Gladiators. Uh, with Swingers and Dingers handing the Glizzy Gladiators their first loss. Uh, Swingers and Dingers did come into this week 0-4, leave this weekend 2-4, and including uh, defeating the defending ch Purple League champions, the Glizzy Gladiators, um, giving them their first loss of the of the winter season. In a 7-4 game as well, a little bit lower scoring. Not something you see too often, but even with our next game, you'll see uh, how low the scoring was for that one. Uh, which which is Beach City Dingers and We Got Spice, uh, which We Got Spice playing their second game, uh, unable to score a run in this game actually, as Beach City Dingers take a four to zero victory over We Got Spice. Uh, this, the standings it does hurt We Got Spice uh, to fall a little bit, uh, but you know Beach City Dingers does have a lot of uh, known known talent in D, especially in D one, uh, being those guys are usually a lot of those guys play with the Beach City Bombers, so. Uh, tough matchup seemed like a pretty good, seemed like a pretty good game overall um, to play and I'll probably wish for a little more scoring but uh, I mean you can't you can't always get scoring in a game if you're not if, uh, if things don't work out so so now we've gone through all these games here for D for D uh, for the purple league and also for D1 and D2 uh, before I get to the standings I should just say it just it does feel weird just to keep talking continuously. Uh, we did this once on a podcast. I can't remember what episode it was, but uh, we broke it down into two parts, uh, two different days for recording. And the second day, <laughs> Justin Lee actually uh, lost his voice. I believe he went to uh, he went to some theme park. I can't remember if it was Disneyland or or Knott's Berry Farm or something like that. But he essentially lost his voice. And I remember we were talking about the uh, the beach, uh, the upcoming beach series. And uh, he just couldn't say a word, so I was just talking there uh, constantly while uh, <laughs> Justin was listening there. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm usually pretty good at talking to myself, but having to talk in front of a camera is a little bit different. So, it is what it is. Uh, we, you know, we, we got we to gotta move. We got to keep moving. I'm trying to figure out my, some editing stuff as well. Uh, as you can see, obviously, the, there is a different intro. Uh, I hope that didn't just break away, if it did. So let me do that. Yeah, as, as Justin was just, as Justin was just sitting there and kind of listening to what I say, I think he spoke one time just to give us an idea of what his voice sounded like. But uh, overall, he kind of just sat there, was just listening, and then he ended up uh, still editing the podcast. Speaking of editing, I'm, st I'm working on stuff uh, as as it, as it's seen here. Uh, you know, there's some different editing. There's a little bit of a different intro. Uh, might, might be an outro as well, honestly. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I, this is my time to kind of be free and mess around with stuff. So, uh, the the logos don't look great in the corners. I do know that, but I don't know how to make it better, to be honest. So, I'm doing the best I can because I'm not much of a, not much of the on, on the t uh, technological side. I'm more of the, more the on hand, like you know, like the actual action, base like football or baseball or sports action. So. Uh, anyway, anyway, sorry for the, sorry for the tangent, but moving on to the standings. You know, we talked about some of these games. We're halfway through the season, and we're, let's let's see how these how these standings are affected by these uh, by these results so far. Starting off with Division One, first place in Division One, Ellie Wilsonville C, sit with a five and zero record in in conference and a six and zero record overall. Sixty eight runs uh, scored, eleven runs allowed. Me, I'm giving them a plus 57 run differential, which is kind of nuts when you think about it. Uh, you know, we saw we saw some similar stuff with some teams in the past. Uh, we're having a high run differential and being undefeated so far, it, but it has not been a good thing for those teams. So we'll see if the other we'll see are able to break that curse. Next up, you have the Trash Pandas in second place, five and one record in the conference, six and one record overall. 49 runs scored, 42 runs allowed for a plus 7 run differential, sitting just a half game behind the Ali Wolf OC. Which, that, I mean, it's that run differential does look a lot different. I mean, considering the fact that one, their one uh, loss, they did lose by 16. Which, that was kind of a, that was a very weird game where there's only just two innings that did not go their way. Uh, we go move on to third place. Beach City Bombers actually sit there in third place. Two and three record in the conference, a three and three record overall. And we talked about them just beating the OC Juicers at D two this uh, D two team this previous week. Fifty six runs scored, forty four runs against. 
for a plus 12 run differential, sitting three games back right now of the other Wolves of OC. So you kind of see you kind of see that gap between the top two seeds and the other and the and the rest of the seeds right now because all the all the other teams are pretty close in in terms of three through six seed. Up next, you got the Avocarbo sitting in the four spot, two and four record in the conference, three and four record overall, 49 runs scored, 36 runs allowed, with a plus 13 run differential. Now, like I, like I said, they they've improved on their pitching a lot, and you can see that with that plus th- with that uh, that 36 runs allowed, and given the fact that they just allowed t- uh, 10 to the Louisville C, uh, you know that that number could be a lot. <laughs> that number's kind of skewed a little bit, and could be seen as a lot lower right now. So. Uh, in the fifth spot, we have Shepherd's Pie, who moved up in the standings thanks to their win over the OC Wolves of LA, who sit in the sixth spot. Shepherd's Pie one and four in the conference, two and four overall. Uh, Thirty-seven runs scored, fifty-eight runs against, with minus twenty-one run differential. Uh, we're sitting four games back of the LA Wolves of OC. Uh, it's it's just it's just one of those things it's like you know you, you win you win the games uh, that are cl- uh, when the games close when the games close. Uh, and then sometimes when you lose, you just lose by a little bit more than you expect, and it just happens sometimes. But you know the record is the record, and they sit ahead of the other OC Wolves of LA, who are in the sixth seed right now, one and four record in conference, two and four record overall. Forty-one runs scored, forty-four runs allowed, with a minus three run differential. Uh, and we saw this very much in the fall season for the OC Wolves of LA. Usually not having the best record, but then also having to. Have an extremely low run differential, so you know we'll see if they're able to turn the tides around. But those are your Division One standings. Right, moving on to Division Two for the four teams in there. Despite their loss to Buffalo D's, who still sit at the top spot right now, four and one record overall in the conference, four and three record overall in uh, in the league. Sixty three runs scored, sixty runs allowed for a plus three differential. Uh, as they sit at the top of D two, uh, and in. And even with that one loss, Wiffle D's, uh, Wiffle D's do sit behind them right now in the two spot uh, by half a game. Three and one record in the conference, three and two record overall. Forty three runs scored, thirty seven uh, allowed, uh, giving them a giving them a plus six red differential. Giving them a giving them uh, ah. giving them a plus six run differential overall. Uh, you know, we'll see if Wolfie is able to jump up in front of Woosh. You know, they. I'm. We'll see. If, I'm sure they're going to play them one more time. Uh, we'll see if that's a possibility. And they, um, they also have another D1 game as well, which I'll talk more about that crossover in a little bit. Uh, th- third seed, we got the Bad News Dingers, two and three overall in the conference, two and four record overall. Uh, a, a perfectly even run differential. Uh, you 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 got 34 runs scored, 34 runs allowed. Uh, just sitting two games behind the uh, behind Woosh right now. Uh, you know, we talked about Bad News Dinger earlier. You know they seem to be improving, and we'll see if they're able to make that push for that Division Two spot. Uh, in that fourth spot, we have the OC Juicers, 0 and 4 record in the conference, 0 and 5 record overall, 24 runs scored, 100 allowed for a minus 76 run differential. Now, you know they they've had they've had some tough ga- they've had some tough games uh, that where things kind of get away from them, but. I, I do see some talent still on that team, and I, I think they can continue to improve as the season moves on. So I, I, I don't think I would not put them out of this D two race yet at, at uh, whatsoever. I think I think they're able to get things going the right way, uh, the right way for them. I think they can I think they can make some noise, and possibly shock a team uh, if they make it to the playoffs. Now for the purple league, got five teams in there. Goes the Gladiators, despite losing their first game, still sit at the top of the standings with a four and one record. Uh, 45 runs scored, 27 to allowed for a plus 18 run differential. Uh, in second place, you have the Pancake Batters, uh, who, I, who I remind you did, they did finish fourth in uh, in the in the Purple League uh, in the fall season, uh, but they sit three uh, three of one here, just just taking their first loss here to the to the Glizzy Gladiators in this in this week, in this previous week I should say. 36 runs scored, 33 runs allowed for a plus three run differential. In the three seed, we have the Beach City Dingers, who haven't played. Have, you know, they've only played four games compared to the teams below them, but they're sitting right now at a two and two record. Thirty nine runs scored, twenty eight runs allowed, for a plus eleven run differential. Sitting a game and a half behind the Glizzy Gladiators right now. In that four spot, we have Swingers and Dingers, aka Wiffle Does, 
uh, with a two and four record, 35 runs scored, 57 runs allowed, uh, for a minus 22 run differential. As I said, two and a half games behind the Glizzy Gladiators. We'll see if they're able to make a push th- uh, this year to to get to whether it be with their with Wiffle D's or with the Stringers and Dingers into the into their first World Series. That I could see that as a real possibility. And then finally, in the five spot, we have We Got Spice so with a 1-4 and four record. 21 runs scored, 31 runs allowed uh, for a minus 10 overall run differential, which you know, very, very, you know, they're, they're a team that's usually in a lot of low-scoring games. You know, we, we saw them. They were just in a 4-0 to game earlier. Uh, it's, it's one of those they've, – they've allowed, the, like, the second-least number of runs, but they've also scored the, 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 le- uh, the least amount of runs, so – if they're able to turn that scoring around, I, th- I think they can see some more wins in their future. Uh, so those those are your, those are your standings for D1, D2, and the Purple League. I should say it, it does seem like that these D1, D2 crossover games they do affect the D2 teams a lot in terms of overall records. So far, a D2 team has not beat a D1 team. Uh, Wish were close uh, their first game versus uh, Shepherd's Pie. They were leading going into the sixth inning, and then Shepherd's Pie able to make a comeback and win by a couple runs, but. So far, it seems like the, the D1 teams have kind of beat up a bit on the D2 teams. Uh, we'll see if that continues to be a trend for the future. Uh, I, 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 could see a, I could see a D2 team beating, uh, beating a couple different D1 teams. Uh, it's just about, is, is it going to happen? Which, who knows? That's it for all the standings and things like that, all the all these uh, results for Week 4. Uh, if anyone is interested in... Uh, in in the uh, golf tournament that that'll be happening uh, in the winter time it will be happening uh, Saturday December sixteenth starting off at eleven thirty a.m. Uh, it's the, the fifth the fifth golf event that OC Wolf Ball has had and this one will be taking place at Strawberry Farms Golf Club uh, in Irvine so uh, 18, 18 holes carts are included range balls are included and the golf attire is recommended. And there will also be uh, different things going on. You know, in the past they've had, uh, you can buy mulligans or, or buy other things to, uh, to help with your golf game. Uh, you can compete in the longest drive, which in the past we've done stuff with uh, longest drive with a wiffle ball, actually. And that, that was a fun one. Uh, that was for the, the summer tour. Uh, uh, I think it was, I believe it was for the, uh, for the spring tournaments, uh, the spring golf tournaments. Uh, the first one that I was in, uh, that was the... Uh, that was that was a competition with uh, with Nick Hedges winning that one, uh, who was in my group, and I was pretty close, but no, Nick, Nick Hedges came out with it. I uh, also have clo- also have another uh, closest to the pin, uh, which uh, the winner also gets half of that pot. Um, that, that that's one that we uh, hasn't really been seen out here too, at least by me too much before. It may have been done at the last tournament, but who knows? Uh, one of the other things you can also buy is the is the dice game. Uh, where you, there there are certain holes where you can cho- you can choose to roll a dice uh, or, or roll a die in, at a uh, at a, a specific hole, and you can either take that score or you, or you can play play that hole try to get a lower score than that. Uh, you know, getting a one on that is is usually pretty huge, uh, but you can also you can also pay for that as well. There will be some raffles going on as well. You know, uh, there'll be some uh, some OC Wolfball mugs uh, getting passed out. You know, I do have one here. I was handed out to me as an as not from this, but as an award winner. Uh, this was a silver slugger from the Spring 2023 Award, uh, the award ceremony. Uh, also, also, you could be getting cash or gift cards or OC Wolfball shirts, stuff like that. So, uh, that 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 usually happens after the after the golf is uh, itself is done. Uh, so, so if if you guys are interested in that golf tournament at all, please go check it. Uh, please go uh, take a look. Maybe if you want to go play with with one uh, a couple of your friends. Yeah, you get uh, you can get a foursome going on at the same uh, where you guys are all playing at the same time. It is a it is a uh, teams of two though. Uh, it's a best ball scramble. So whoever, uh, so both both teams will start off in the, with a tee box. You take the best shot and you both play from that same spot and you keep going all the way through until you until uh, all the 18, 18 holes are done. So uh, I'm not not sure if there will be anything with AOC with ball uh, winter t shirt. Uh, that is something that is still yet to be seen. Uh, but we'll see on, on on that end if that's going to happen. Uh, also, also another thing that's going to be coming relatively soon, uh, especially for the especially for the new people that are looking to join the league, 
uh, you know, and that don't really know wolf ball too much and want to be able to to learn some pitches pretty quickly. Uh, uh, there will be a tutorial out at some point uh, made by made by yourself, uh, your boy truly, uh, Stephen Hayden, uh, where I'll be show, going over some of my pitches to kind of help people get a better understanding of how to uh, how to control the wolf ball a little better and how to get some certain movement and things like that. So. Uh, that'll be that. I, I, I we we teased that a little bit in the past. We're gonna act, I'm gonna actually look to do it now. Uh, that'll be out sometime. Hopefully, sometime before the season ends. So, uh, or it could be a thing that goes on right as the season ends. Because so, uh, I I don't want to give away too many of my pitches and too many of my secrets. So, uh, the, look 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 for that as well. That'll either be on the L C C page or on the O C Wiffleball page. We'll see. Also, another thing with the with those with OC with the ball, uh, there there will be no uh, outside series being played. Uh, there was it was supposed to be scheduled at like a turkey trot event, and there was also the sand series. Uh, however, not enough commitments uh, from not enough team uh, or not enough commitment from enough teams to be able to do that. Uh, so those series are going to are going to be off. They're, they're just we're just going to be playing Tuesday nights, except uh, for the All Star Game and Home Run Derby. Uh, which which we've done at Bal uh, Balboa Peninsula for the past few seasons. Now we've done it since the beginning of uh, 2023, actually. So that'll be taking place now. Uh, the data switch it will be taking place on Saturday, December 9th, uh, starting around 10 11 a.m. Probably more like 10 a.m. It's a very fun day out. It's a very fun day out there. Uh, you start off with the home run derby, and then eventually you get into uh, the you, you get into the All Star Game where you divide up into teams and uh, you know David Uribe was the All Star Game MVP this previous season uh, who was with the 47ers uh, who's not, not with us right now uh, schedule wise to uh, just things didn't work out and then you had Jordan Dressler as, as the as the defending home run derby champion uh, first time champion for him as well so we'll see if anyone's able to take that take that crown we see we've seen a very We've seen, we've seen a path of a lot of a lot of back-to-back -back winners uh, in in this in this home run derby. Uh, I think the only person not to win back-to-back -back in the home run derby was Zach Moore, and I no I I couldn't tell you if he was at the All Star game in home run derby or not because I was not there myself. I was actually in uh, in York, Pennsylvania, playing in the Wolfball World Championships, but uh, it sounded like that went well th this past year, and it, uh, we'll be looking to do it again this coming year. Uh, this or this coming season, I should say, but that'll be taking place Saturday, December 9th, and more info will be put out about that soon. Uh, make sure to communicate with your teammates about who's going to be representing representing your team because uh, each team gets two gets two nominations for the home run derby and one for the all star game. Which it, you can't put the same person. Uh, it, you are allowed to put the same person for the all star game and the home run derby. Uh, Oh, there's an issue where you can't get that many people. Then talk to Anthony, kind of let him know what the situation is, and then you only have this uh, these certain play guys that can go, uh, or or girls for that matter. I should say not, not to not to exclude the girls, but uh, th that'll be taking place December 9th, So make sure to stay tuned for that. Other than that, I don't really have too much else for you guys, to be quite honest. Uh, this is going to, this is going to be a shorter podcast. Uh, next week, I may bring on, I'll try to bring on a guest. Uh, just to help extend the podcast a little bit, but I know some people do like the shorter stuff. They don't want to be uh, listen listen to Justin and I ramble on about nothing important for an hour and a half, two hours, or two and a half hours. Uh, we, we do talk about important stuff, but you know, compared to compared to like work work and things like that, you know, it may not be seem important. But we we do appreciate everybody everybody listening uh, to the podcast each week. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this one with me in it, uh, just me by myself. So, uh, you know. With with that we we are, uh, Justin will hopefully be back uh, in two weeks. Next week it will be another podcast with just me. Uh, so uh, this is coming out on a Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll see you guys. We, I will see you guys tonight. Uh, good luck to everybody playing in their in their games on two on Tuesday nights. Uh, and we we will see you for the uh, for episode thirty three of that scuffed up next week. This has been episode thirty two with your boy Stephen Hayden by himself in the studio. And we will see you guys next time. Peace.